Yeah, hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Wood Psycho, so my real name is Paul, so you can refer to me as both. But anyway, uh, for any uh, new people showing up here, I basically do a lot of uh, power carving on uh, found, found objects of wood, mostly uh, pine knots and uh, cottonwood bark lately. I've been dabbling in that, but I don't like to use any pre-manufactured wood that's uh, been squared off or anything like that. I'm basically just find stuff on the ground and unusual shapes and turn it into something, mostly faces. And, uh, but anyway, I just wanted to give a prop, proper introduction there. So, this is a uh, part two, by the way, if, uh, if you're just coming on board here. So, this is, uh, it's going to be around 20 minutes long, uh, I anticipate. So, basically still working on the rough out phase a little bit now um, doing the lower portion of the face here shortly I'm gonna put a mouth in and then uh, from there we're gonna do uh, focus on details today so right now I'm kind of a uh, kind of shaping around the mouth giving it a rounding rounder look instead of a flat look just to make it more three-dimensional and uh, yeah, I'm using this uh, Stylo Plus, and it's preferably used for detail work. But sometimes I have to switch back to the high-powered, higher torque uh, Dremel tool because this uh, gets a little bit bogged down. And it's got auto shut off on the Stylo Plus. I guess it's a some kind of safety feature. I'm not sure what it is exactly, but um, I believe this is a brushless style Dremel due to the fact that it's such a smaller, smaller diameter that doesn't have room for proper brushes. And I don't see anything on the side where you can replace them with, like on a normal Dremel. But that being said, I would assume this tool can last much longer without maintenance. But anyway, so far it's been working, you know, as expected. So, yeah, I'm using, um, let's see, what I'm using here is a, I'm using some carbide burrs too on these. I just uh, punched in the mouth more or less here. And uh, these are the spherical Dremel burrs, mainly for uh, metal cutting, and uh, they're more aggressive. And they're they're pretty good when you when they're right out of the box. They they just cut through this stuff pretty easily. But after a while, they get they tend to get dull, and there's not much you can do with them. Unless you're a master machinist or something like that, where you can re redo the edges on it. I mean, I'm sure it's possible, but uh, it's something to look into. I mean, with the way prices are going up with things these days, it's uh, probably beneficial to somehow recycle these burrs. And, uh, but as a matter of fact, I don't really throw my old ones away. I just uh, throw them in a like a like a little bucket or bin, discard them until I come up with some idea, somehow something to use them for. But uh, right now, I had to go back to the Dremel three seven zero, and uh, I felt that. Um, that Stylo Plus wasn't aggressive enough, so I just had to return to the big beast with the saber tooth burr, flame burr on that one. So it's going to make quick work of this. As a matter of fact, that flame burr you see, that, see there has been around for a while. My first actual 
saber tooth burr that's been over like eight years ago and the thing still rocks believe it or not I just try to be mindful when I'm using it I don't want to like bang in the metal bits here and there just use it strictly for wood because the if you do take it against the uh, metal, it can damage the surface of the burr. Because <laughs> they're only intended for plastic and wood. So, But like the carbide burr like I was mentioned earlier, that's uh, that can work on metal. It can cut through metal. So it's a, uh, but I use it for wood nevertheless. So yeah, I'm gonna, Doing some uh, serious removal of material on the side. <clears throat> and then from there, we're going to go into the nitty gritty detail work. But you can see how the, the lip, the bottom lip's now kind of forming. And the guy's uh, eyes are in shadow due to the nature of the pine knot, which is going to be a natural hat or some kind of a accoutrement on the guy and I always use those uh, horizontal pieces as a as hair or hats or whatever and it works out really fine saves you a lot of trouble you don't have to like focus on putting hair on the guy too much because basically these guys always have hats on or something like that Sometimes they look like turbans too as well, which is uh, unusual. Gives it a different kind of look to it. But like that horizontal piece was the, the main truck at one time, many years ago. And then the, the face I'm carving into is the branch that protruded from the, the actual tree. I've mentioned this before in previous videos, but I figure if you're new on the scene here, I'd figure I'd repeat that observation for anyone interested. And uh, yeah, I came back to the Stylo Plus because now we're getting into smaller detail stuff now around the eyes there. And uh, I don't like to dig too deep at first with the eyes because once you, if you go too deep, there's a possibility where it, the piece is ruined or you have to like take the rest of the face all the way down just to match where how de deep you did cut into. So it's basically, you're wasting time doing that if you make a mistake, so you gotta adjust the whole face again. But there's not much danger in that if, in, if, you're, if you're a bit mindful of the whole process. <laughs> You have to be seriously aggressive to really f screw something up here. I mean, or have some kind of aggressive tool that just like, just sinks right in. Especially with cottonwood bark, you gotta be very careful with that stuff because that stuff is like, before you know it, you can punch through the other side. But with this stuff, um, not much of a danger. So it's a lot more forgiving, I would say. So yeah, I'm using this, uh, I think it's a quarter inch spherical burr, carbide burr made by Dremel. And they're coming a pack of two for like around $7 at your uh, local hardware store, which uh, happens to be Ace Hardware in this town where I'm at in uh, Dixon, Illinois. So... And that's the only hardware hardware store in town, so you're kind of at the mercy of them, unless you want to drive over to the next town, which uh, which would be Sterling, Illinois, at the Menards, which is kind of like a Home Depot style um, hardware store, where they sell massive amounts of things there, mostly like for do-it-yourself home repair stuff. Yeah, this is a area I was telling you about where I'm working on the mouth now. I'm just trying to um, expose the mouth because it's going to be slightly open and there's going to be some teeth that 
revealed on this uh, person's face. And also, I, I always go back up to the eyes. I'm, like at this stage, I'm just bouncing around all over the place. Because uh, just completely and continually scanning the whole area <clears throat> of the face and looking for areas that need um, attention. It's almost like a, I don't know how you describe it, but it's almost like a, someone with attention deficit disorder. They're just like all over the place. That could be a way I could describe how this uh, works, but, or you can describe it as a kid in a candy store going ape shit, looking at all the candy and stuff like that. But whatever the case may be, I'm always uh, <clears throat> constantly like looking over the whole area when I'm working and then not focusing too much on one area all the time at this stage because if you get too focused on one area you kind of tend to um, ignore the other areas which is not good going around the eyes here kind of draw, uh, recessing the corners of the eyes back more gives it more dimensional look right there because that, that, that'll uh, alleviate the flat look that some I've noticed some people have and uh, it, it's not a big turnoff. Maybe it's intentional, but I like to tend to give some depth to my piece by uh, recessing cert certain areas of the face back. Like what I'm doing right now around the eyes is uh, pushing, the, pushing the eyebrows back a little bit to match the eyes and the, the actual skull or face. Yeah, so uh, basically this is a, a tweaking stage and uh, just doing some adjustments here and there. Especially around the eyes. I saw, the, I noticed the eyebrows were sticking out too far so I decided to push them back a bit. And uh, it's, they just uh, didn't look right. You just wanted to like make an adjustment there. Here I'm uh, putting in pencil markings. This uh, tells me where I need to work on, more or less. It's like a little road map. And uh, I'm putting in the pupils there. That does, that's not necessarily where they're gonna be, but I just put them in there just to give it a, like an idea of what it's gonna look like, you know? And then I might have the the face looking in one direction or another but that's just to give me some kind of idea of what it looks like but eventually I'm gonna um recess those eye the the eyes underneath the eyelids to make it give it some more depth and coming up here in a bit I don't know if it'll be in this video but it'll definitely be in the next video and uh Here's my scribe that I use to like gouge out areas and it's especially around the eyes You're basically like scratching little lines into the face That gives you an ad additional reference for uh, where you need to work on I also come in later on with the scribe just to add age lines and wrinkles and stuff like that if you want to go super detailed, which I've done in the past. It just depends on the mood, on what you want to achieve and how much time you have for the piece. I mean, you could spend way more time than I'm doing here on this piece if you wanted to and just take it to like even a whole new level. But you know, after a while, it's just like there's a, there's a point where you have to stop and say, hey, you know, enough is enough but um, I haven't come across that that train of thought too much because uh, I usually f come to the point where I think it's finished and I'm not going to do anything anymore mostly but 
sometimes if you're like looking at the piece like maybe a couple of weeks later you go well how did i miss that so you go back and make a little adjustment here and there that's if you're uh, obsessive about it which i try not to be too much but it's always about the details in the end though so <clears throat> Yeah, with these pine knots, I tend to uh, blend the face into the natural wood to give it uh, like a more organic look instead of being um, just placed upon the piece of wood and it doesn't look natural at all. So I try to like um, right now, I'm <clears throat> kind of feathering the edges, <clears throat> feathering the edges so it blends into the surrounding wood so it looks like it just can't, it's emerging from the wood naturally. And, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess you could call it feathering, feathering technique where you're blending the edge of the face into the surrounding areas. I guess that's a good way to describe it, but anyway, um, Another important thing to think of is lighting, which you see here, I have a, a lighting source directly above the, the face, creating some shadows, which helps you uh, see the areas that need attending to. It just uh, helps out with the, the process. Because otherwise, the finished product could tend to have a flat look, as I've mentioned before. <clears throat> and uh, it just gives the gives the piece uh, so much more uh, dimensionality and depth when you uh, address all the the curves and stuff. Like right now, I'm I'm forcing the edges back, edges of the face back into the piece, giving it more um, depth right there. And uh, some face lines too, right there, where the cheeks in the mouth area. I think it's the cheek bag. I'm not. I'm not. Um. I'm not too privy on the anatomical components of the face. Some people know those words by heart, but I should actually go and look into that and educate myself on that. And I think. As, as well as uh, anyone out there that's serious about it, it would be probably beneficial to educate oneself <clears throat> at the, with the terminology of the different muscles on the face. So there's a few carvers out there I've seen that get into the serious technical terminology and stuff, but... Not, nothing to be ignored, I would say, but <clears throat> yeah, here I'm um, hitting the face with a little sandpaper. I do that every once in a while just to get the rough edges off. Gives you some kind of idea like uh, what the wood's like as well when the finished product comes around. And then a uh, I usually finish off with some wire wool or steel wool at the very end because the steel wool fits a lot of crevices. It, it kind of conforms to the shape of the face better than this uh, sandpaper. So you use sandpaper, you got to fold it and then do all kinds of goofy stuff sometimes just to fit it in there in the cracks. But steel wool, like right there, you can push it in there and it gets into all areas of the face. And there's different grades of steel wool, by the way, as I've mentioned in previous videos. But actually, the really coarse stuff can take stuff down pretty fast if you're not careful. So you got to be a little mindful. I know some people use like a flappers, sanding flappers and stuff. I've never tried those yet, but um, I'm sure those come in handy. 
and it greatly speeds up the process, I would say. Especially with larger scale work like uh, chainsaw carving, it probably comes in more handy with that. But with these small pieces, I don't think uh, the flapper is very necessary. And uh, that's uh, just an observation. I mean, <clears throat> well, it looks like uh, I'm going to wrap this video up end of part two and then we'll be uh picking up on the next one at on part three which will be more uh, detailed work and it might not be as long as this video we'll see the but um yeah it should be a few days from now i'll get the part three up same format i'll do a premiere so we can do some chatting and uh I'm trying to think I should be doing this stuff on uh, weekends because a lot of people are, have day jobs and stuff. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments section. I'll be happy to listen to any, um, it, any suggestions you might have when to do these things. I'm just saying. <clears throat> but anyway, I really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for uh, hanging out for these... Uh, 20 some minutes I know it's uh, time is valuable and I hope uh, we'll see you guys on the next one take care okay bye